guys, this is Summer. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. If you are not new here, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here either way, and I hope that you will like me enough to stick around and subscribe. Today we are continuing the Evolution of Beauty series. This is episode four, the 1950s. This is a collab with several of my awesome friends here on YouTube, and I'm going to link them down below. It will include Amy Lynn, Beauty Obsession 101, and Nicole Lonnie K. So if you guys will, please go check out their channel. Show them some love. Let them know I sent you. If you want to hear a little bit more about the 1950s and see how I got this look, then just stick around. The 1950s was the decade after World War II and there was a shortage of men. So ladies were pulling out all the stops to try to catch themselves a husband. So they never left their house without makeup. They never went out without makeup. It was just not done. Makeup in the 1950s was strong. It was chic. It was elegant. And most of all, it was classic. The look that they wore in the 1950s, many people still use today and have throughout the decade. Max Factor, Revlon, and Pons were some of the most popular brands in the 1950s. However, there were higher end brands emerging that used more expensive ingredients and were higher priced. And some of those were Helena Rubinstein and Elizabeth Arden. Avon also showed up in the 1950s. Um, let's see. For foundation, women wore more um, natural colored skin tone foundation, so they did try to stick closer to their skin tone. There were cream, liquid, and pancake foundations. Um, natural skin tones were in, like I said, and most of the foundation colors had a warm undertone like peaches or pink. Powder was usually a shade darker than your skin tone, and they would press it into the skin and leave it on for about five minutes and then dust it off. So that, again, was kind of baking a little bit, I think. But the main purpose of powder was strictly to prevent shine and to kind of blend everything together. So it wasn't really like in the past it had been used more to like lighten up their skin tone or their complexion. And that's really not the purpose in the 1950s. I should have came in a variety of shades. The most popular shades were grays, browns, golds. There were also blues, greens, and purples in pastel shades as well that were popular. During the day, it was common for people to match their eyeshadow to their eye color. And at night, on lighter eyes, they would add a little bit of silver in or a little bit of gold in on darker eyes. They did not go up the lid with their eyeshadow. They mainly put one color and focused on the bottom of the lid. It was very rare that anyone took it up higher on the eye. They did sometimes extend the eyeshadow out a little bit on the sides to elongate the eye, but it was very rare that anyone did take the eyeshadow color up to brown. Interesting fact I came across in the late 1950s, shimmering luster was added using guanine. I'm not sure how you say this. Guanine, guanine. Uh, it came from fish scales and guano. Mascara. Mascara was still mostly the cake mascaras or block mascara, and they would wet that to activate it. And gross, but interesting fact that I came across is a lot of times ladies would just spit on the block to activate the mascara and then apply it to their eyes. But in the 1950s, tube mascara did come out and uh, Max Factor and Helena Rubinstein both claimed uh, props for that. They both claimed to be the inventor or creator of that. Mascara did come in a variety of colors during the 50s. You could get just normal black or brown or there were also purples, dark greens, or dark blue shades as well. And usually they only applied them to the top lashes. However, some who had extremely light lashes might apply them to their bottom lashes as well just to make them show up, but it was much more rare. 
Eyebrows were well defined and plucked and shaped, but they were not pencil thin like they had been in the past. They were a uh, more natural, thicker brow towards the inner eye, and then they would arch that out into a sharp point on the outer corner. Liner. The doe eyed wing tip was the most popular and that would start about halfway across the eye, go out and just come up into a little tip on the outside. That evolved in the mid 50s to the cat eye, which was where you would start at the beginning of the eye, take it all the way out and the line would come out further and be, you know, longer and pointy on the end. And, and I, I did choose to go with the cat eye for my look today. Eyeliner also came in a variety of shades such as blacks, browns, purples, greens, and blues. So um, greens, blues, and purples were getting pretty popular during the 50s. So lips were the strongest element of makeup during the 1950s. That was the most important thing. It was the thing that popped. And usually they still preferred a red lip. That was still usually the color of choice. However, there were corals and oranges and shades of pink. Lips were mostly lined to their natural shape, sometimes using the lipstick itself with a brush, and they would fill in the lip. Then they would blot. Then they would apply powder to set the lip. Then they would apply the lipstick again to make it more long-lasting long wearing that is um wow a lot of it's interesting that they did all that back then to make their lipstick last longer in the past mm -hmm. they'd often overdrawn the lips or change the shape of the lip using liner but in the 50s they lined more to their natural shape and they did try to keep the top and bottom lip more of an equal size so that's an interesting fact no awesome. smear lipstick was invented by an american chemist named hazel bishop in the 1950s and by 1953 the sales for that product had reached 10 million dollars and imagine guys that was in 1953 that was a long time ago so that's a heck of a product and heck of cells. So obviously the ladies liked that no smear lipstick back then. Blush or rouge was used sparingly and it was really mainly used to warm up the face. I didn't find any mention of contour in the 1950s other than that they would use blush on their cheeks and kind of take it up to their temple just to warm the face a little bit and sometimes use it even on, um, you know, even on other parts of their face just to warm the face up a little bit. Reds, pinks, and corals were popular nail colors, but clear was also an option. Fashion-wise, we had T-length swing dresses with petticoats for fullness. We had slim sheath dresses, otherwise known as pencil or wiggle dresses. They had tailored suits, um, pencil skirts or circle skirts, poodle skirts. We had capri pants. They liked small hats or headscarves and hair flowers. Jewelry was mostly pearls, animal breeches, or sweater clips. I only had one pair of pearls, so that is what I'm wearing. Let's see. And then they liked a lot of matching accessories, shoes, handbags, um, you know, scarves or whatever. It was all matching. They liked high-waisted jeans, Peter Pan collar blouses, which I'm gonna have to Google a picture of that because I'm just not exactly sure what that looks like. And twin set cardigans were very popular as well. Swing coats during the winter, kitten hills or stiletto hills, or sometimes flats. Some of the most popular actresses during the 1950s were Marilyn Monroe, Grace Kelly, Brigitte Bardot, Natalie Wood, Sophia Loren, Liz Taylor, um, and of course, Jane Mansfield, and of course, Lucille Ball. Everyone loves Lucy. All right, guys, so that's a little bit of information about the 1950s. I did find a lot of interesting things. I always do when we're researching these videos. I really enjoy that because I do find a lot of interesting things. I did try to um, curl my hair with big rollers, and then I tried to curl it and use clips, and either way, I could not... I could not get the nice full curls that I was going for, so this is what I got on my hair, but I did try to, um, you know, I tried. I tried, guys. I kind of did the little back home thing and side parted it further over to do the, the Marilyn Monroe look. I just couldn't get enough curl in my hair, so I did go um, again with the cat eye on my liner. I used a light brown shimmer shade on my lid, and I only did mascara on my top lashes, which is kind of against my religion, but in the interest of the beauty community and the history and the evolution of beauty, I felt it was necessary to do so. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's go ahead and get started.
If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're not already and ring that little bell so that you'll be notified when I post future content. Also guys, please follow me on social media. It is listed down below. I am on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So follow me on those social media outlets. Also guys, please and do make sure you go check out my lovely friends, Amy Lynn, Beauty Obsession, I almost said Sarah Michelle, Beauty Obsession, and Nicole Ani K. Go check them out, I'm gonna link them in the cards and in the description box down below. So please go check their channels out, show them some love, let them know that I sent you. They're gonna have their awesome videos up for this as well. This has been so much fun. I do love this series, guys, and we will have the 1960s coming up next. So that should be a blast. Make sure you watch for those videos and yeah if you guys enjoyed it give me a thumbs up comment down below if there's something else you would like to see or if you would like to see some kind of different collab or series this has been a lot of fun doing a series like this so if there's something else that you would like to see please comment it down below and i will see you guys in the 1960s thanks for watching bye